Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a group focus in a repeating group. Now, I did an earlier video where I showed the group focus here, creating a simple menu. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a group focus within a repeating group. And it's a little bit more complicated than creating the menu here. And you can see in this repeating group, I've got this user Sue, and I have this pop-up in green that happens. That's actually the group focus that's popping up there. And it has information on that uh, person in the uh, repeating group, the creator of the, of the message in the repeating group. So this is what we're going to walk through in this video. So I've got this uh, repeating group I created from a, uh, another video, another demo. So I'm not going to walk through on how to create this repeating group, but I will put a, a link to that video below in the comments or in the notes. So what I have here is this text message thread. And this is basically, let me just click on the rich, uh, text editor. So it's the current sales message, uh, the create date, the creation date and then the creator's uh, first name. So just quickly over on the, on the data structure, so message, the creation date, and the creator. So that's all the, the fields that I'm, I'm taking for, that, um, for this text field here. Okay, so the other thing that I have is, let's just see the, the, so the dimensions, this is 150 pixels by 40 pixels. Now, to support group focus within a repeating group. I can't directly put the group focus in the repeating group. Uh, Bubble doesn't allow that. So what I need to do is I actually need to come down here and create a reusable element. So I've, I've created a reusable element. I'll walk through that in a moment. But the, the reusable element, which in this case is called user details, so that's my reusable element, I have it as the same size, 150 by 40. And you can see when I, when I move my cursor over it, it's called user details, okay? And basically um, the data source, so if I created a, a new um, reusable element, this field would be empty. But I wanna use a current sales message. Uh, and you'll see why in a moment, why that's, that's important, why you need to fill that out. So basically I have it as the, the same footprint as the text. So, so the group focus, um, or the, the uh, reusable element, I should say, is the same footprint, uh, same size as the text, so that when I move my cursor over it, then it'll open up the group focus. So again, when I go over my cursor in this area here, the, the group focus will open. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and move down to here to reusable elements. So I have this reusable element, it's called user details, I've created it already. And basically uh, to go in and do this, you can click on new reusable and then type in whatever you want. You can clone it um, So from other reusable elements. In my case, I didn't clone it from anything, I started it brand new. So let me just cancel that. And to get to it, you go up to page, you scroll down to the bottom, and you see reusable elements here, and then user details. So it's gonna open up a, a new screen, and let me just scroll to the top here. So I've got two elements in here. I've got the group A, let's scroll up, so group A. And this is actually the um, reusable element uh, outline, if you will, uh, user details. So let me go to group A here, and in group A, I have a button. Now, the reason why I have this button, and you could pick anything, uh, you could pick an icon, you could pick a text field, I just chose a button. But the reason why you need to do this is, uh, so for your group focus, if, if you remember, let me just open this uh, up again. Um, you need, Bubble needs something to, to trigger off an event to go and show or hide uh, the group focus. And I'm, in my case, I'm using uh, the button to, to, to do that. Now, I'm also making it um, invisible. So for the style, I, I leave it as blank because uh, when you create a, a button, 
okay? It has a standard button as a style, so you want to go and just make that blank. And the reason why, so if I go back to standard button, I can't make it transparent this way, and I need to make the, the button transparent. So let me just delete that and go back to this other button, okay? So the background style is none, there's no border, so it's completely transparent uh, for the button. Uh, again, I chose button. You can choose text icon. Um, just make sure that it is uh, transparent, uh, no background style, and no borders, and so forth. Okay, so now that that group is, is set up, now I have this group focus. Okay, and the group focus, the reference element, if you remember uh, from the other video, so I need to have a reference element with my group focus. For this one, it's group A. And my offset uh, for top and left are zero, zero. So I basically have it directly underneath uh, the group. And I also have the data source, data type of content as a message. The reason being is in that repeating group, I want to take the content from the message so that I can show when it was created and who the creator was. So I want to have the type of content as message, and the data source is going to be that parent group's message. So that's important to make sure that you set this up so that when you get to the, um, the content, so let me just click on this text field, so group focus, I have a text field in here. Let me go to Rich uh, Text Editor. So I have the name, so it's going to be the parent group's messages, creator's first name, and then parent group messages, creator's last name, and then their email and their phone number. Okay? So basically what I need to do, so I'm going to go back to group focus message. I need to make sure that I have the type of content set up correctly for message in my case. Um, it could be, in your case, you might have it as user. Um, you want to make sure that it ties to uh, whatever your repeating group is, in, my, in this case, what the repeating group is, and then the data source. Make sure you have that set up correctly as well, or else you won't get the right content going into this text field here. So for instance, if I go just quickly, change this to user, I'm going to get errors on that. So go back to message. So that's how, how you set up the uh, group focus um, here in the reusable element. So it is important that you do have a reusable element in order for this to work within a repeating group. Now I'm going to go back to the design group focus. And basically all I have here, again, is the user de details. It's the same size as the text underneath it. And this basically allows me to go and um, uh, when I move my cursor over it, um, it's going to um, go and show that group focus. And let's see here. Let me go back for a moment. Okay. So one thing, just to go back to the uh, reusable element for user details. So when the button is visible, and again, it's transparent, but when it is visible, okay, and you want to do this every time. Let me just back up for a moment here. So when the, the button is visible, and you want to do it so every time, and let me just quickly go back and show you. So um, when the condition is true is what you want to pick. So general do when condition is true, and it default is just once. So just once is when the page loads. So you actually want to do this every time. So every time that the button is visible, you want to, to go, and what did I choose here? Uh, only one button is visible. Okay, let me just delete this now. I'm going to go back to my original. So when the button is visible, I want to show the group focus message. And then when the button isn't visible, I want to hide it. Okay, so this is the way, let me just back over here. So this is how I go and toggle between showing the group focus and, and hiding it. So when my cursor is over this uh, text field, it's going to show it. And when it's not, it's going to hide it. Now, in fact, while this shows the text, I'm actually highlighting or my cursor is over the button, which is transparent. So Bubble knows that my cursor is over the, the, the button, and it's going to show 
the group focus. And that's how you basically set it up again uh, within the reusable element. I'm going to go back here. And from a workflow perspective, um, there's, there's basically these other workflow choices. These are all from the other example here. So I basically don't need to do any workflow changes or anything. I basically just put in this reusable element here, user details. And then uh, basically from the workflow design uh, on the um, reusable element page, it takes care of everything. And just refresh here. So again, just highlighting over their name and you get this group focus that opens. So that's basically it. This is a little bit more of a complicated design uh, because you are using or you're creating a reusable uh, element and you can't directly uh, do the group focus within a repeating group. So it's a little bit of a trickier design. Um, I hope this made sense. If you have any questions or comments, please leave me a note below. If you like this video, uh, I do appreciate the thumbs up. I will have future videos uh, coming, and uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you will get notified of those.